Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another of the round five matches of the Pokemon Crystal Full Item Randomizer Tournament. Phoenix Roost vs. April Campos is our match today. I am Ryan, and here I will be commentating the it for us. And runners are off already, slightly delayed, but uh, they will now make their, uh, try their best to get few red as fast as they can because first one to beat red wins this race. They can achieve that in, uh, by collecting all 16 badges and the three poke gear parts to wake up the Snorlax, which then will enable them to talk to Professor Oak, provided they can get there either via having cut or the ability to surf and climb the waterfall. For our starters, uh, we do have a uh, top bar set, I believe. Marowak, High Rope, Ledian. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's not a great start ever. We get an early PP up, that's some nice money. Now then Marowak it has, the Sludge Bomb, or some little attack, I can come to you, uh, yeah, not the best, we did get an early Master Ball though, so we can catch whatever we find if we want it. Probably not in the cargo, but... I don't know. Some people might have some preference for it. Uh, probably not Lissy either. Although we maybe like to see it a bit more on something we uh, want to have experience on. As they are going to try and find all the required items, uh, getting the item finder definitely will help them, probably. Maybe. Did you see a Flareon here on uh, Route 29? Um, Gabriel decides to immediately catch it with the Master Ball. Um, I'm not sure it's really that advisable to throw the Master Ball there. Marion has a lot of attack, but uh, being a fire type uh, doesn't really get the best uh, step move. So uh, uh, we'll see. And meanwhile, Phoenix was got an old rod and pushes up an Espion. Now that might be. Uh, bit better and not by just being uh, 8 levels higher immediately and coming with stab confusion, okay. Um, but yeah, just, just in general, uh, Espeon having the high special attack stat in combination with its uh, special type stab attacking type. And in general you are probably more inclined to go and try to be on the special attacking side if you have the chance. Yeah, I'd say uh, Phoenix Roost definitely was the uh, better uh, end of uh, what he got out of his Master Ball. Okay, we we'll counters Magmar. Magmar solidly offensive. Uh, but decides to uh, faint it for the Flareon. Get some experience on it. Well, Phoenix Rules got paralyzed on the first fight. Did find Waterfall, which is a uh, very solid uh, water type move to teach, and 
the one big reason why a lot of runners don't really uh, teach waterfall at all is because surf is just so much better. Or at least surf is just simply better and is more likely to be acquired uh, earlier than later. Um, the big problem with an HMs, obviously, is that you can't just simply talk, uh, teach over them. So uh, you would ha need to go to the move tool to re remove them again if you wanted to get rid of it. But uh, yeah, I mean, given that the Espion right now only has confusion and pursuit for uh, special type attacks to make use of them. Um, I, I definitely can see uh, just uh, them going ahead and teach Waterfall here, um, at least on Phoenix Blue's side. Just for the better coverage and uh, in general. Waterfall isn't a bad move at all. It still has 80 base power. And uh, yeah. It, it really just gets uh, outshined by the fact that Surf has only 95 base power. And only 5 less PP, I believe. I think Waterfall is 20. So yeah, there's really... Very little reason to teach sur uh, to teach Waterfall if Surf is accessible. Well, speaking of accessible, that's the Rising Badge, so... So, uh... Not only uh, don't uh, not only do we have any obedience problems anymore if we were to decide to uh, get a trade Pokemon or something with a bonus XP going. Uh, no, uh, as soon as we are able to surf, we also have waterfall access. We also did find cut in there, so if we get an early. Uh, Squirt Bottle, we can do a lot in the world, but that was not what I wanted to say. Um, as soon as we got Hive Badge, we can also check... Uh... The route uh, the to cut item pretty uh, pretty early, but Phoenix Truth deciding to immediately bail out of the tower again and uh, check out the level 20. It, it's a bit sad for the Espion, because... Uh, uh, this is uh, about as good as you can get it, uh, aside from your moves. But uh, looking at the level 20 is probably not a bad thing in general. Bayleaf? Uh, uh, Bayleaf is not bad, but uh, it's not great either. And the moves that it shows so far isn't really impressive. Uh, Hyper Beam Nightmare. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, wouldn't really want to take that. And Phoenix goes back into the tower. Unfortunately, runs into this optional. Gabriel deciding to just straight up go for it for experience. Which, I mean, with the Flareon that has is, uh, not an ideal moveset for it is understandable, although it has hypnosis to potentially put things to sleep. And well, we did see that Yanma has Dick if we were to come across one. Now, Pin Missile is a physical move, at least for Flareon's very strong uh, physical attack, but um, yeah, it's Pin Missile. Squirt Bottle for Gabriel, who is not immediately turning around and check out the level 20, which uh, I... Definitely would have expected more from Gabriel's side than on uh, the side of Phoenix Roost, given that the Flareon isn't really that uh, well equip equipped currently. But, uh, alas. 
It seems to be doing fine for now. Did find a secret potion. So, if we were to go into the lighthouse, we can finish that in one trip. No need to return extra. Just to enable the Jasmine fight. Oh, level 6 Mew with Sludge. This could potentially be somewhat annoying for Gabriel Compass, especially given that Psybeam won't really do that much on it. We'll see. I'm missing the pin missile. Ah, but the second one gets in for four. And having the poison cure berry to cure cure off the poison off of sludge. Coming in pretty nice here. Yeah. Seems like Gabriel is going to be okay for now. Oh, belly drum pitcher. Good thing that we do shot that. So now into the gym. Oh, it has crit arrow blast on Gary. Oh, ouch. Well, that that that, that patriot is uh, low key runnable. It it has its strategy set out. Uh, I mean, belly drum arrow blast. That uh, I mean, that that's uh, if you can get that in, um, that will hurt. Yeah. Taking the hypnosis here a second time does make it reasonably easy for Gabriel to uh, get through. Decide there isn't really being a problem. But yeah, uh, that was an uh, unfortunate low, little time loss here for Gabriel Campos. Not attempting the gym now, instead, is going to check out the Sudowudo. Well, we did see that Faulkner did not really have anything unnecessary. Now, let's see if Phoenix Roost is deciding to just uh, continue with this Espeon on the normal track and ignore the squad bottle for now. Probably would be very well advised to at least uh, wake up the pseudo again and uh, try to the rock smash guy before you do anything else, just so that you can buy rock smash once you're at Goldenrod. Do you have the mystery egg from the. Uh, rock smash guy. Interesting. That's a long backtrack to check that one, but that's. Fully in logic for a uh, fly or storm badge, so I mean, you never know. It's not really necessary to do right now, we do have a lot of things we can do. Phoenix Roost is at least going to uh, take out this little water again. Escape Rider is at least hitting Tormus Gym. You. Both of them not deciding to go with Bayleaf. He's taking the experience for the Espeon and uh, I can absolutely understand that. This was now going into Aquatique first, check the item finder house. Oh, egg is hatching. See what we do have in there. Ah, that's a hopper. Get another PP up, so 
a bit more money. Not bad. Phoenix Roost activating the build cutscene, enabling us to get a level 20 in Goldenrod. Which, at this point, actually, I don't... I don't really think that it would be that uh, much of an upgrade anymore. To get one of the... Uh, to get uh, the EV from Bill. It had to be something really good to uh, not want to just stay with the Espeon for now, even given it's not ideal moveset. Uh, we could just improve that at, at any time with Waterfall. So what might be slightly more interesting could be uh, the Kenya. Given that we have the Rising Badge and therefore no obedient, obedience troubles at all, um, Getting the bonus uh, bonus experience in from the Kenya can be uh, extremely helpful in the long run. But at least for the short term, Phoenix Roost with the Espion has a very, very uh, strong one and you need a good reason to uh, want to switch off of that. Well, to get a Hive badge here in the uh, National Park. So, um... You can now use cut. And Phoenix Rose is at least uh, going for a golden rod, potentially the re reverse loop here through Southern Johto. Gabriel Campos picking up the red candy, about to find the Hive Badge. Unfortunately, going for the safe reset will not be able to take advantage of that. Instead, it will have to bike back. I can not what we are looking for for the Espeon. Full here on Route 35. And Phoenix Roost picking up the Kenya. And the dramatic paw. Maybe doing some tracking. Going to check out the bike shop for a great ball. While well, Gabriel Campos hitting the move to tour first. Uh, return Aurora Bomb are two interesting options. Uh, reaching Egg Bomb for now. We have physi better physical move for Flareon. Uh, return would be something for the long run if you are uh, uh, running your main uh, for a longer time. Earlier on, it might not really be that helpful. Mm. But, uh, yeah. As the levels grow on our main, the longer we use it, uh, the more. Uh, Return could be an option for any physical mon. For Espion, though, this Aurora Beam is extremely nice to have. It's still on the lower end of uh, attacking moves that you would want to see, but uh, it will definitely help in terms of coverage. Oh, Rock Smash. I think that was Ancient Power. I'm not sure if there's any other Omniboost move in this uh, generation. Don't think so. So, yeah, Ancient Power would definitely be also an addition for uh, Flareon right now. Just to get more on the physical side.
Phoenix was, you don't have money right now, you should sell a few things before you buy your stuff. Yeah, one one kind of downside, I'm actually a bit curious why Phoenix is not selling those two carbos. Uh, yeah, but the, I, one slight downside of... Uh, Hitting golden rods so early is usually that you don't have necessarily as much money as uh, you do if you uh, hit it after doing all of Azalea. So uh, what you are about to buy uh, might be not as much as you would like to. We did see that there was also Dizzy Punch TM in there, I think. Uh, Phoenix Roost was hoping for a potentially Psy Beam to upgrade uh, Confusion a bit. I mean, the Dizzy Punch could have been potentially interesting for Gabriel Campos. Um, oh, and we do have Dig on the Kenya if I did catch that correctly. Meanwhile, we do have uh, a Sword Stance uh, kicking Flaffy as the EV. That unfortunately does not have trade experience, so uh Yeah. Not really helpful, but uh yeah, Phoenix Roost has taken notice of the dig on Kenya and says, Well, uh let's put that mail on something else. I wanna keep that dig. That will definitely save Phoenix Roost some money right now. As there is no need anymore for Phoenix Roost to buy escape ropes. Looks like both of them not deciding to do the full reverse loop, instead returning uh, towards uh, potentially a critique. I'd assume they might want to turn into Kenya. And then potentially also check out Rock Smash TMs. Meanwhile, uh, Flareon wants to uh, do its best Espion impression. Apparently, uh, gone, going to want to stay on the physical side, uh, the, the special side of attacking. Wants to learn Razor Leaf, which uh, I mean, it, it would be an upgrade over. Uh, oh, that's Poke Gear. I mean, ah, okay. Phoenix was not checking out the Rock Smash items yet. I mean, Razorleaf would be an upgrade over Giga Drain in terms of PP. You'd lose not very much attacking power, and uh, yeah, the 5 PP on Giga Drain uh, make that move not very reliable uh, overall in terms of uh, yeah, general usage. Uh, the the thing. 20 or 25 PP that Razor Leaf has so uh, definitely make them much more of an uh, yeah generally usable move instead of just as uh, bot uh, move to you remove some pesky water type mons. Gabriel did decide to turn it down instead, valuing the uh, healing effect and these, I think, five more base power of Giga Drain right now. And I mean, given that he has Psy Beam for uh, 
a very good amount of PP already. Uh, it's it's reasonable, but uh, yeah, still not really what you wanted to use on Flareon, probably. But uh, yeah, Egg Bomb is your other option. Uh, well. Meanwhile, uh, Phoenix Cruise encounters a Snorlax and does not really have something good to uh, fight it with, especially given that the Snorlax has uh, also leech life and uh, yeah, that is slowly but surely whittling down Espeon. It also has Dragon Breath to paralyze the Flaffy that Phoenix Cruise decided to switch in. So this uh, could be problematic. Phoenix was now going for the triple kick. I'm a bit surprised that they did not even attempt to try and make use of sword stance here. Probably wanted to get in the Espeon at some point again. And gets through. And while we do find a high jump kick TM on Gabriel Campos' side. Now, if you were wanting to stick with Flare Flareon, that's actually a pretty good move for you. And Gabriel Campos uh, decided to... Check the Rising Badge check and the Mystery Egg. We did got both of them already. And the mach We get five machine parts. Oh boy. Uh, looks like Gabriel Campos is deciding to keep them. There is definitely uh, the option to go and reset it away now that you know that uh, you, uh, now that you know where it is. Um, the machine parts for this tournament cannot lead to either Fly or Storm Edge. So, you would always be able to find those two before you would need to turn in the machine part. Which, by extension, means you don't really need to keep it now and take the backtrack since you would always be able to return with Fly to collect it, if you need it. But, uh, yeah, Gabriel just deciding to keep it anyway. We do have this soul badge on the Kimono Girls. I mean, they, they did give uh, Phoenix Roost a bit of trouble here, but uh, the trouble was well worth it in the end. And instantly hitting a burnt tower. Now teaching a rock smash. So that we can check this one item in here. And onwards to Rival 3 and oh, Gabriel Campus actually deciding. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, just a cu uh, cut check here first. Let's see if Gabriel is actually continuing. And yep, looks like it. So we do now have our first, uh, first bigger divergence here in routing. Gabriel deciding to actually do the loop towards Azalea. Meanwhile, Phoenix Roost uh, just straight up hitting Golden Rod. Going not to say, uh, Acrotique. Do we have the red <laughs> What's with all this, these backtracking options that we are handed? Rifle being a bit annoying with the fur alligator. Phoenix is through to Arrival 3, so we will now have some Romas to listen to. Mm -hmm. 
I somewhat recognize the, the Raikou cry, but it doesn't immediately pop into my head as something impressive. Not sure about the Entei and uh, absolutely not sure about the Suicune. Don't think there was anything extremely good in the roaming too at least so they're there uh, if we get to level 40 maybe that level difference will carry whatever it was um, and yeah I mean uh, Given that Phoenix Rules has this Espeon, that is definitely uh, shaken, shaping up to be something uh, decent. So I wouldn't be very inclined to try and go look for it. Now, Phoenix Rules, uh, after a save going for Route 38, I don't think that really works as Phoenix Rules is, is intending it to. So I do believe that after loading a save, the rumors uh, spawn randomly and not uh, on the adjacent routes. But yeah, uh, just carrying on now. Well, we did find Whirlpool uh, in Union Cave, but I uh, completely blanked out on checking the other items. Headbutt here, menu, uh, olive oil. And an ether. Hyper potions and some super repels here on Phoenix Roost side. We will have to uh, come back later and stock up on some more repels. Those 20 will run out uh, reasonably fast. Oh, no, think could be annoying. And steps by cannon taken out the already pretty hurt Espion. Ooh, drill pack too. That's that's a mean mill tank. You know what? So Phoenix was running running a bit low on PP. Espion wanting to re learn return on its own. Okay. I see. I mean, I definitely say waterfall would help this Espion pretty much currently, especially against Mecargo, which uh, we only really have, uh, we would have confusion to deal with it, but uh, we are low on PP, and now we are poisoned and hurt because of uh, not having Port Waterfall so far. Using a PP up to get some PP on it, okay.
Double edge TM from the Char project. It could be something interesting for the uh Flareon. Meanwhile, Phoenix Roost does find Surf in uh, Lighthouse, so is rewarded for holding off on teaching Waterfall. Now just has the better water move to teach. And we get the Fog Badge right with it. Oh, okay. Sure. Be, be like that. This places us in an places us in an interesting uh, spot since we do now have full access to uh, Mount Mortar. We are not able to repel uh, the waterfall section yet, though. Um, so this might be pretty annoying. Oh, watch out for exploding shuckles. That was a boom. Oh, and getting paralyzed off of a spark from Kadabra. Let's see if Phoenix Roost is attempting to uh, fight Jasmine here. And while Buxy does not really give us anything. So I have missed a few items, so potentially there was something more in uh, Azalea or Union that uh, slipped my attention, but uh, so far there was really only Whirlpool that I took notice of. That was here down in the southern Jodo move. I mean, that there was uh, the, the red scale and now the uh, lost item. So a lot of fetch quests here. Flash. Fly on the other side of uh, in Mount Mortar, the ladders. Phoenix Roost is going for at least the surf section. I wonder if Phoenix Roost is just straight up going ahead and don't care about repels for the waterfall section at this point. You do have the option of going into rocket hideout. Uh, uh, get some levels onto the Espion there. Um, chances are though that you are not able to get to the level 33 that you would need to repel the Mount Mortar section entirely. So, a bit questionable uh, in how much value would be in that. Given that you're already here. You have the card key. Interesting. No, we've only found four badges so far, so we are still a bit off of that. We do have a lot of checks available to us. Who's just straight up going into waterfall section, not worrying about uh, 
the repel ability. Espion is reasonably fast, so there's a good chance that you can run from a lot of stuff that you are encountering in here. Even if they are a bit higher in level. Who's deciding to go and attempt to catch this Meowth? This will not be a main switch, but Meowth is the highest level that can be in here in uh, Mount Mortar, so it will be able to repel any everything away except from other level 32 Pokemon. So it will help a bit with the encounters that are potentially coming up in here. Did see Phoenix Rose check out the move set? Um, see Bubble Beam. Uh, I wouldn't really have expected, even with the seven level difference, the, uh, the potential uh, main switch here. But we do do see one problem of the Meow for repel action here is that it is not really uh, uh, is not really able to run a well that well either. Nothing for the red scale. Switching in the Espeon just to run away. Oh, no. Trying to faint it. And it kills itself with the... Uh, Confusion from Battle Dance. Okay, but lucky there. Could have ended worse. Unfortunate, very quick back to back encounters. But Phoenix Roost is almost done with this uh, waterfall section. Uh, once Phoenix Roost is hitting this ladder, he will be able to repel everything in here again. Which will make life quite a bit easier. Gabriel is on the way towards Olivine as well, so we'll be finding Fly and Fog Wedge, uh, Surf and Fog Wedge soon. Well, we do have the Marsh Badge in the Strength section. Mount Water. And the Zephyr Badge, okay. Yeah, now we're up to six badges, so that card key is getting closer to being uh, relevant. Uh, not yet. Now on the way to Lake of Rage, probably going into Rocket Hideout after. Uh, it will be a nice uh, 
experience boost for the Espion here, and we do have the Earth Patch here on Road 43. Now that is patch number 7, so now the card key is actually uh, enabled to use. We can now go into Radio Tower and clear the rockets for 4 items and uh, the Ford's Director. Which would be available even without the card key. But, uh, it's always nicer to have that available so that you don't have to do extra fights for them. Yeah, we do have cuts, so going to do the three Lake of Rage cut checks here. It's an option. Phoenix was setting up the safe reset. Also it's a very long annoying backtrack from here. And if you don't find anything in here, you don't really need to take that. I mean, a max elixir is nice, but doesn't really uh, make you want to do the backtrack for it. A glacier badge uh, probably does do that a bit more, though. Flareon at some point wanted to learn extreme speed. Gabriel and Boss is now uh, using that. Dead of Egg Bomb. Uh, the, the downside of extreme speed is that uh, you only have 5 PP to use it for, so it's not uh, the move that you would generally want to rely on. Well, we do see an, a shiny elegant? Is that really that shiny? Okay. Gabriel Campos did find his surf access. Phoenix Crew is going into a rocket hideout at this point. Gabriel Campos also ex ex in in encountering that exploding shuckle. Which, I mean, uh, there there's not a lot where you, uh, there are not a lot of Pokemon where you're fine with them exploding on you. Shuckle is one of those where you say, well, if you want to make my life easier, uh, just go on. April is also attempting to try and fight Janine here. We do have a few X items to use and for setup here. Flareon's moveset isn't the best for it right now. We'll have to see. And Polygon could be annoying. Let's see what it has. Setting up and defend. And it has Shadow Ball. And then Crits Outrage. Yeah, that their war X defense won't really help. Uh, speaking of Shadow Ball, Phoenix Rose just picking up the TM over in Rocket Hideout. Getting some nice 
uh, assistance from Porygon. Oh, electrode could be annoying, and it has Stab Spark. Oh, don't think that's a f two shot from Fall, so it should be okay. And not of a crit. This is, this is painful for Gabriel Campos, but that can be done, but yes, Spark having the 30% paralyzed chance, so... Paralyzing again... Uh, yeah, Staryu? you <sighs> Might not be that scary, but it depends what it has. A stab water type move could be bad, but try attack is not. Do have Giga Drain to uh, heal back on them. Yeah, Gabriel Campos is uh, spending a lot of resources, uh, but gets through and gets a Cascade badge. And a PP up. So Phoenix Rose will have to uh, return for this later. With Fly, it won't really be a problem. Phoenix Rose has turned in a secret potion already, so it's really just a uh, single fight for two checks, which uh, with this Espeon uh, after the hideout even should be reasonably well. So far, not really much worth mentioning in the Rocket Hideout. Uh, probably one thing to keep this Max Revive. Badge in the hideout, so we do have a badge in here after all. Campbell starting the Kimono Girls will be finding Soul Birch soon. Meanwhile, Phoenix Roost uh, sees that Espion wants to learn Icy Wind, which, since we uh, do have Aurora Beam already, doesn't really help us anymore. Aurora Beam is just a slightly bit stronger and slightly bit more accurate. And a speed drop from Icy Wind not really making up for that. Insert Spider-Man meme here. And you see an Espion as the Electrode. Uh, or as one of the Electrodes. Graveler? Yeah. 
Weirdly enough, one of the more distinctive cries, so... Uh, again, pretty good. Get that one. That's a Goldark. Okay. Pest Megahorn. That could have been bad. But, oh, uh, yeah. Nothing too important on lands. A created shop TM. Given that we've seen a high jump kick TM already from Gabriel Campos, not the most impressive thing to find. But it is more accurate than a high jump kick and uh, doesn't have the drawback if you. Often it doesn't have the drawback if you miss. Which makes it in safer use against something like uh, Chansey and Blizzy. Soul Badge for Gabriel Campos. And Gabriel the first one to going on and take on Morty. Gabriel Campos has not been to Morty yet, where the card key is hiding out, so has no real immediate reason to potentially want to put it off. We did find a Rainbow Wing already, so Tin Tower Access is potentially on the horizon here, which does make it reasonable. Um, did Phoenix Rules decide to not do price here, or am I just completely blanking out on stuff? That is an interesting decision, if so. I mean, price isn't really the most worrisome uh, gym leader. Phoenix Cruz now returning for Goldenrod, taken on Whitney. I mean, the Espion, I don't think, has hit level 30 yet. So it would be slightly uh, below the levels of price, but... Oh, no, at this 31, so... Uh, yeah, it would have been at least on par with uh, what price had, so... I think at least giving it in the temple would have been definitely reasonable. Uh, the big downside... Uh, that this decision of Phoenix Truth potentially could have is that if Price has Storm Badge, Phoenix Truth is just a lot of unnecessary uh, back and forth tracking. And again, uh, the Aspen has struggled a bit and it doesn't really have the greatest moveset, agreed. But uh, it definitely had, would have had a reasonable shot at taken on Price. And, uh, if you can't get it, uh, it's not really that punishing to get out either. I don't know. And we don't really have that much else left that we can access to. I mean, we do have access to parts of Route 44, although Stormbridge cannot be there. We do have this radio tower. Gabriel Campos taking the time and teaching a lot of HMs. Mm 
And given that uh, Gabriel's Flareon is on level 31, uh, I'd either assume he will be taken on the hideout first or is going to use up to two candies before hitting on the waterfall section. Because uh, Gabriel is definitely able to uh, repel everything in there once he does that. So I could see him holding off on the waterfall and surf section for now instead going for the hideout first, which yeah, it seems very likely that that's exactly what Gabriel is intending to. And then just return to it. With the full ability to repel every and everything. And to pick up the earth badge here. We're unfortunately running into this optional. Yeah, uh, if you stick to the uh, path one step more to the right, then that optional won't see you. But if you take the uh, path right next to the water, this vision is enough to extend all the way over there. Somewhat breezing through Radio Tower. Uh, I mean, the moveset isn't uh, isn't great, but uh, especially with Surf now, it will definitely do its job. And there's still a lot of potential for uh, to find some improvement. Bruce is running a bit low on healing items now, though. So I would probably prefer to uh, have slightly easier fights. One left here, then the false director for an additional... What auto can be annoying? Uh, and then speed drop. Potentially. Sign of that. Though Marine not too scary. There's a badge for Gabriel Campos. Okay. That was an okay fight. Didn't really cost too much. And we do have finished Radio Tower for Phoenix Roost. Getting Dragon Fang as the first reward. Not really that helpful. A rare candy is a lot better in that regard. A metal claw here. Probably not very useful at this point. Could be something if we need physical coverage moves for a potential late game main switch, but uh, even then, probably not. Gable Campos heading into the hideout will be getting his seventh badge in here, so uh, the story will be somewhat intact. Water gun also not a move that the Espeon really needs. Getting poisoned off of sludge again. He's just not really having that great of a luck here. And uh, poison sting from false director. 
Um, yep, I was wanting to say, well, we, we just got that antidote, might as well use it instead of a heal powder. Oh, and pin missile showing why it's really not a great move. 85 accuracy, uh, it is just uh, not good at all. But yeah, um, Radio Tower didn't really have anything for us right now, so uh, yeah, Phoenix Roof going towards the south has not been to Azalea yet, that's something to note here. And it's not even... yeah, I was wanting to say, uh, you probably should check at least this one item here. Um, now, Softs and Girls is a different question. That's three fights for a single item check. But, uh, yeah, leaving behind that one quick check on the island there is definitely not very advisable. Especially if you don't have the ability to use fly just yet. Picking up Flash. Yeah, and was also about to say you don't want to miss out on this item here. Oh, it's just a protein. While Gabriel Campos finding the Shadow Ball TM, that would have been would be definitely a nice addition to the moveset of uh, Flareon. Getting another very good physical attack in there. Definitely help it out. So, going off the question from the chat, what checks did we not see yet? Um, we don't don't really have seen any surf checks in Union, or Violet, or Tojo Falls uh, yet, because Gabriel Campos did the backtrack without having the ability to surf. Aside from that, I don't think we've seen Price and Softs and Girls, and that's basically it. Well, I mean, given that we still have access, we do have that one check in uh, the pharmacy that we didn't see. Phoenix Cruz did... Uh, neither Phoenix Cruz nor Gabriel Campos did bother to go over there, just for that one single check. We obviously don't have either strength access n uh, nor uh, World Island access yet. The new checks that Phoenix Cruz are is going to show us, uh, or that Phoenix Cruz are going to show us, uh, will be the two basement items in Union Cave. We do have his uh, flash chamber accessible. Phoenix Cruz did find his every badge after all, so that will be even four additional checks. True, we do have Whirlpool. Never mind. Uh, Phoenix Cruz is about to pick that up in Union, so we do have Will Allen access now. We didn't have World Island access when we were over in Autobine. Given that the Glacier Badge was on Lake of Rage and we had to get a Surf from the Lighthouse, we would have had would have had to go over to uh, Lake of Rage first without the ability to do Hideout. And, uh, Yeah, then go all the way over to Olivine, then we could have done it. But yeah, true. We do have flash access, we do have complete whirlpool access. Well, Islands is on the table. Even for a storm badge. The one, fi uh, one thing we are uh, still pretty much lacking though is Kanto access. We do have waterfalls, we can hit Victory Road, which uh, could be somewhat interesting for Phoenix Bruce in the sense that he, uh, in combination with Whirlpool, can 
do an entire Route 27 check into a victory road once you're there. Um, none of that can lead to a storm badge. So, Phoenix Cruise might be tempted to hold off on that. And instead head back over towards Wall Islands. But, uh, I mean, on the other side, there are a lot of checks over on that backtrack that uh, still could potentially hold uh, Storm Badge from Phoenix Roof's perspective. And Phoenix Roof did not check Mystery Egg or the Rising Badge check on Elm yet. Both of which potentially can hold on to a storm badge. Just that we see, I already saw them from Gabriel Campos, them not being it. But there's still the two checks over in Tojo Falls that we don't know of yet that could be storm badge. So, at this point, it uh, seems at least reasonably likely that uh, our Kanto Axis could potentially be hiding out in Victory Road. And while Gabriel Cap was absolutely getting annoyed by this uh, Lugia, just not dying, was paralyzed already, and it using Ancient Power. And yeah, even getting out sped by Lugia. Okay, ancient power ice beam all oh, that's and Octazuka that's so bad. Oof, this this was a fight and a half for Gabriel Campos, so But yeah. Just showing all the more that the moveset on the Flareon isn't really great. Ancient powers base 60 attack. There's Storm Badge for Phoenix Roost in Union Basement. So yeah, holding off on that Azalea loop, paying off big time here for Phoenix Roost, being able to route this in pretty reasonably. And this will now make a lot of things a lot better for Phoenix Roost. Bill Campos picking up the great job here. I mean, at this point, if Gabriel Campos is going to stick with the Flareon, he definitely should think about at least teaching Shadow Ball and potentially uh, either Karate Chop or High Jump Kick. I mean, uh, especially Ch uh, uh, Shadow Ball is one of the better physical TMs, so you might not be wanting to teach that that easily to something that you are not going to stick to the end with, but... Uh, Did the combination of very low amount of PP and just really not great overall moves on the Flareon had been showing uh, up a lot more than it is necessary, I'd say. And pin Missile on the strings here should be okay, yeah, doing its work. But uh, yeah, relying on a multi-hit move that has only 85 accuracy uh, uh, it just does not feel great at all. Phoenix Rem Roost remembering about the Flash Chamber. Uh, and Ancient Power also. And, uh, Ancient Power and Extreme Speed both, but only 5 PP. So, you really just have uh, 
15 attacks and pin missile. That, that's, well, 16 now with the PP up that Gabriel Campos used, but that. It's just not much, uh, not much PP for an extended amount of fighting. We do get a pack TM from Price and the blue card. So yeah, Phoenix rules the uh, Price skip actually paying off here. Or probably more accurately to say not getting punished. Um, did see the expansion card check in the flash chamber and uh, Phoenix Cruz is returning without flying to somewhere. Did he forget to grab an item? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe he just forgot to grab this one and remember. Why Gabriel Campos now? Hitting the surf section of Mount Mortar will be probably follow that up with the waterfall section, so we'll be finding Zephyr Badge and uh, I think Marsh Badge was in here too. And a card key, obviously. Cleaning up Violet. Does not get anything out of it. And now we're going to see the Rock Smash checks from Phoenix Rules. They are not fully in Logic Warren. Won't get anything important in here, but uh, that's no reason to not pick them up. Or not at least check them. So the Phoenix Rules cannot know that there's nothing in here. And yeah, I mean, we'll be able to hold on to that high jump kick TM for a potential late game main switch. Or if there's, uh, you know, a uh, Megahorn T-Tar, that is Red's lead. Well, we would want to uh, switch to something more physical-oriented that potentially can hold on out against that. Because a good way to get rid of a T-Tar is just jump-kicking it. Now with Fly found, um, Phoenix Roost here over in uh, New Bark gets the five machine parts. I wonder if you are going to see him take on the Victory Road. Uh, all islands fully in logic. You might be wanting to do that first. And yep, we see it. We see him fly over to Cherry Grove. Check that one item first. Probably turn in the red scale with it. There's the Marsh Badge for Gabriel Campbell's and the Zephyr Badge. Yep, looks like we are going to see first and restock on Super Repulse. Uh, that was uh, already foretold. Only 20 at the time that Phoenix Fools was over uh, uh, was able to buy over here. Uh, wasn't even close to be enough, so we'll be probably buying at least 20, more likely something like 30 or 40 more, since he now has the money. Can stock up on some hyper potions, it takes 11. There we are. 40 additional super repel stats should be more than enough. 
for uh, the rest of the game, and now we'll be taking on Jasmine with a much higher level as Beyond, so should not have any troubles at all, we'll be picking up the escape badge. Well, Gabriel can pause back and Violet to do some surfing checks. Hopefully he's deciding to go back all the way over to Union to pick up a storm badge in the basement, because if he just goes back towards uh, Tojo Falls and is taken on the Victory Road, then he will be still missing out on Fly. Or on uh, the storm badge and the ability to fly. Yeah, uh, for Phoenix Roost, now the way over towards uh, Wall Island is the most appropriate. A lot of items in there. We do have the farm with the item that we also can still check. Phoenix Roost might pick up the fly point over there first, check that, and then seek out Wall Islands after it. Which, if the server wing is in the pharmacy specifically, would be uh, the better option. Oh no, no, just uh, not even going on to the pharmacy, just uh, picking up the fly point and then going straight back to wall. Okay, sure. I mean, with this Espion, especially, Phoenix Cruz is probably not too interested in the level 60 anyway. There's the expansion card for Gabriel Campos. Let's see if he is going to continue on on Route 32 and check out Junior Basement for a Storm Badge. Or if he's deciding to do other things. That is a bit out of the way for him, since he has done, every done everything in his area so far. Oh, Rainbow Badge in Union, and the safe reset is definitely indicating that Cable Campos is deciding to check out those two surf items in Union Basement, and if they are nothing, just reset back up here. We know that he will not need to do that, as he will be able to fly out after that. Of strength also in World Island, so two checks in World, two good things to find. Will this continue? Not really, the Moonstone's not necessary. The Paralyzed Heal even less. Protein. Storm badge for Gamer Campos. Bone Club TM. Another move that could be okay coverage for a physical attacker. So we do have a lot of physical attacks to choose from that we could teach the Flareon, but uh, Gabriel Campos is going to stick with his special moveset. for now, which I definitely am not really agreeing with. Well, there's Thunder at least for Phoenix Cruz. That's an interesting cover move for uh, Espeon. It will definitely shore up some of its uh, inability to hit water types very well and uh, will be yeah, a Way better move to use against the Slowbro line than Pursuit. It has accuracy problems, which is one downside, but you can combat that with using uh, X accuracies. And given that we again, didn't really have any good other coverage for a lot of water types, so yeah. I'm definitely agreeing with uh, the Thunder, Thunder Teach. Might be slightly early still. Um, 
if we are not one to hit a canto leader soon we don't really need to have stronger moves just yet but uh, I think overall it's definitely the right uh, right choice to do so Phoenix rules returning back to the earlier skip price so uh, will not be really find anything worthwhile in here but will most likely continue on to check out route 44 and potentially hop into Ice Path. Given that we now have found strength, the Flame Badge would be in there, Phoenix Loose could then just move straight on towards Goldenrod. If we don't find Flame Badge though, then I would expect Phoenix Loose pretty much has to go over to Victory Road. Now with Storm Badge found, there's not really uh, much that will hold us back from that any longer and it's uh, three items on route 27 an item on route 26 and five items in uh, victory road that are fully available over there and uh, I mean there's also e4 for one item so far we did not find clear well yet but uh, it's there accessible it is in logic just saying also did Phoenix Roost ever decide to check out the pharmacy Seems like Phoenix Rose is at least going to stock up, stock up on exit items. Um, I would expect them to do uh, buffs and girls at this point too. Yeah, definitely buy X accuracies. If you want to use Thunder, a bit more liberal, that's the way you want to go. 20x defense seems a bit... Uh, extensive oh, well and uh things was deciding to head over towards Tojo Falls and Victory Roads again we do have uh a lot of items to check here before it for but uh yeah I mean the stock up on uh Especially X accuracies could be potentially preparation for an uh, early E4 play here. I say early, but by this point, Phoenix Blues, I believe, has only Sops and Girls and maybe Pharmacy left to check. Though I don't think he went all the way into Ice Path. Nothing outside or in Tojo Falls. Let's see what the Whirlpool Lock check here on Route 27 does hold on for us. Well, Gabriel Campos finally deciding to teach our Karate Chop over Giga Drain. That will help his PP usage and give him another physical move to use. Could be potentially bad against the slow bro line though. As Giga Drain would have been a reasonable move to use against that at least. But we do have Pin Missile for that, so uh, yeah. Do have a Mineral Badge here on Route 26. So. We're not looking for that much more at this point. Three badges and a radio card are all we need. Um, well, 
not 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 completely. Um, we do need a way to get into Kanto at all. We don't have either SS ticket or pass. So we need one of those in addition to the three badges and uh, radio card. But yeah, at this point, uh, I would strongly suspect Phoenix Root Roost uh, grabbing that E4 flyer point, unless he does find Kanto access in here. Which is not unlikely, but we have three, seen three out of the five items already, and uh, so far, nothing. Uh, the six special isn't it either? And it's not this counter TM, so um yeah. Uh better grab the D4 fly point and see from there. We are running out of checks that we can do. So, again, I'm not sure if Phoenix Roos did actually decide out to check out the pharmacy. He should, uh, oh, that would be only a flyover to sign with a way though, so that's not too terribly bad. King with Megahorn. That's not nice to see. And then missing the thunder. Was having some slight troubles, but it's true to the rival. Now it's decision time. I don't think we have seen the two checks in the ice path. I'm not sure about the pharmacy, but Phoenix Roost is at least shopping here. In Victory Road. Or an Indigo Plateau. Can buy full restores here. Going to buy two revives and a few full restores. And yep, looks like we are actually going to see an E4 check. So uh, yeah, if I just missed or uh, not really noticed Phoenix Cruise checking out the pharmacy and the two items in Ice Path. And yeah, then we don't really have anything else left aside from Soft Sand Girls. Which I want to say we did see on Gabriel Campus' side. But I might just be. Uh, or I might just. Uh, Imagine that the pharmacy was checked, then uh, all the more reason to go in here. There's a rainbow badge for 
Gabriel Campos will be picking up strength next. <laughs> yeah, triple kick is also not the move that Espion needs. And strength for Gabriel Campos. It's also done the rated top by this point. Should probably mark that. Obviously, both of them have Rock Smash access since very early. Oh, oh that Mewtwo is scary. Um, Body Slam is not the worst that can do. But the fact that it's able to outspeed you is annoying. Bit sad for the uh, X accuracy that Phoenix Rules used. And he didn't save before this fight. Oh, getting the crit body slam with Paralyze in here is annoying. Going for Boomerang now. I need to steal again since the Mewtwo still outspeeds. Uh, probably setting up. Okay, going for special. I would have expected the speed here. Uh, missing the Boomerang is very up. <laughs> and then. It oh, come on! Using Stun Spore, really? It's gone. Yeah, I think Shoot does not really have any full heals left, so needs to burn a full restore to get rid of the peril. But yeah, if once that Mewtwo was dealt with, uh, the rest of the fight was pretty okay. set up on special here, oh, or more the accuracy at least to use thunder with reasonably. Oh, wow, good thing dodging that mirror move thunder. That Avi was stacked, that was flamethrower. Flame will burn. Oh, that's another full restore gone, but I uh, think we should probably want to take that heal. Did Phoenix Roost ever do Morty? Now that I think about it, I don't think so. He might have been, but uh, I. I can't distinctly remember Phoenix Rose going in there. I definitely have missed some things on both sides at some point, but uh, I can't quite remember going into Morty. I can't quite remember him going into Ice Path for those two items. So, uh, yeah. Going 
fully four before that, uh, even with this Espion, is, uh, yeah, uh, quite courageous, I'd say. But yeah, that's Phoenix Cruz done with E4 and the jam. So, Professor Alm will give us one item. And that one item is going to be a Max Repel. Oh no, that was, uh, was it a Dire Head? I don't quite remember which one the, uh, um, Rising Badge check was. Either way, okay, Max Repel, the CFU or Random Night Treatment says, and yep, we just spoke about it, Phoenix Roost immediately, immediately going back for Morty to get absolutely nothing out of it. Campos trying to get through rival. Three. Um, which, interestingly enough, does help him set up with Swagger. Crunch would be actually something that you would be interested in, although at this point, uh, it moves that doesn't really have room for it anymore. You would have liked that earlier. It would have been so much better than Pursuit. But what? Well, we do have Aurora Beam and Thunder now, and we won't, don't really want to get be uh, get rid of that confusion yeah Gabriel Campos does get the e4 fly point as well I believe Gabriel did not go towards route 44 at all yet so I can't imagine him going just straight up to e4 here either. Taking up the fly point is reasonable at this point with how little you have left, but uh, again, I don't expect him just to immediately rush it, rush it at this point, given that we only have one check available for it. Morty giving us a piece of candy, but nothing more. Phoenix Rose trying to remember, yeah, you cannot do that burn tower item, you don't have flame badge. You cannot go into Tin Tower, we don't have clear bell. And yeah. Looks like Phoenix Roost is going back towards Route 44, so we'll hit Ice Path. And yeah, we are now seeing both our runners uh, on the ice path at the same time. The only difference is Gabriel Campos has not done E4 yet, which did not lead to anything. So uh, yeah, if that is just not necessary, Gabriel Campos just made up a huge chunk of time. Or Inverted the Phoenix Cruz just lost a lot of time doing an unnecessary E4. 
so far, you have to say. <laughs> and there's the plane badge. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why you don't skip Ice Path if you have strength. This one unassuming badge just might be lying right there. Teaching strength now to you. Flareon, uh, 10 more PP at the cost of the priority is definitely the better trade-off for Gabriel Campos currently. Um, and now Boeing going move on to uh, Blackthorn. Now I I said Gabriel made up a lot of time here or Phoenix Rus lost a lot of time and while that is true, the Espion has now a considerable level advantage in addition to just the straight up better moveset. So, whatever is on red is currently very much favoring Phoenix Rules, if both runners were hit to uh, go mode at a similar time. Oh, hello Clearbell, now we do have 10 tower access. But, Especially given those two mines, any lead that has Megahorn is a bigger problem for Phoenix Rules than for Gabriel Campos at this point. So... There's still a reasonable chance for Gabriel to get an upside here. And Phoenix Rules did decide to just straight up immediately rush 10 tower here. Not even going to Route 45. Meanwhile, uh, Gabriel Campos going back for Azalea instead, hitting the Slowpoke Well and the Waterstone Chamber? Huh. Does he need to buy escape ropes? Okay, that, that seems to be the case. I was running out of escape ropes, so needed to shorten that up somehow. Yeah, but there may be Dick from the Kenya coming in for Phoenix Roofs, not having to worry about uh, escape ropes at all. The big problem with the play that Gabriel Campos is doing right now. Since we do now have 10 tower access, we do uh, subsequently have ho oh, oh, chamber access. So not combining this with the waterstone chamber here, if you have to go to ho oh, chamber, it will be an additional trip which is not that little time. So it is a considerable time loss if required. If not, that's actually a bit helpful for Gabriel Campos. And that was just a... Grimer. So that would have been a potential option to run at least, but... Uh, yeah, at this point, probably not anymore. Definitely not for the Chansey. Phoenix was just uh, already past it uh, anyway. And I mean, we do have Stab Sludge available for the Muck if we would want to go that route, but uh, Gabriel Campos uh, has pretty much refused to teach a lot of physical moves to be fair on at the moment anyway. So, yeah, I cannot really see that switch happening at this point either.
Right, we did also get access to the second item in uh, be locked behind E4 on Phoenix Roost's side. Not, I, it, it, I'm not sure if he actually did check it. If he did, then it wasn't anything. I didn't really notice anything worthwhile so far in the tower. And I mean, at this point, we're really only looking for still four more things, but uh, not too much. Uh, we're not looking for that, though. That's an unfortunate uh, detriment to the menu. Tin Tower? Uh, pretty empty so far. Three more items left. Well, um, now we could go check out the level 60, which uh, Phoenix Rules has no reason to, and Gabriel Campos probably is not going to. Yep, and that's an empty tower, so... Uh, I mean, either Route 45, Dark Cave, or the whole chamber have to have our progression, or well, I mean, Claire is fully accessible too, so any of those. But yeah, here's the big thing, Phoenix Roost will be able to do everything that Gabriel Campos did just earlier, but he will have an additional four, time, uh, four items right next to them, and if they hold on to something, those four items. Gabriel Campos will have to make an additional trip to uh, through Union, which uh, will be a not insignificant time loss. So, I mean, I can see why Gabriel did it, considering that he bought the escape rope, so if he needed them, um, might have been uh, the kicker, although, thinking about it now, uh, if you were going to din do Tin Tower next anyway and you have fly, you don't need an escape rope, since you can't just fly away from the top of the tower, to which then would next be Azalea anyway, since you would want to have the chambers and could just then and there buy the escape rope, so uh, yeah. The longer I think about it, I cannot see it as anything but a mistake doing it in this order. Except for when you want to specifically gamble on those four items in the whole chamber, have nothing and take the time save. Which... I mean... If that's what you want to go for, well, it's your choice. It's not a choice I would probably make ever. But oh yeah. Oh. In this case it would have been absolutely right to do so because the Phoenix Roost showed us that uh yeah Ten Tower was a complete bust. It was just absolute bait. There was nothing in there. Uh, um, did Gabriel just only do Slowpoke well? Because that was the pass in the Waterstone Chamber. Did I just miss and pick that up? But if, if Gabriel only did, uh... If Gabriel did only the well, then that play is definitely more reasonable. With the escape ropes. Oh, there's a bone meringue here. That's definitely great to have for... Uh... 
with Flareon. Gabriel is going to do soft sand girl. Yep. And yeah, now with the pass found, Phoenix Roost is going to head over to Kanto. We still don't have radio card yet, so we have not too much that we can do over there. Although, uh, with full uh, power plant and cut access, um, I'd assume that we will uh, see the way over to Lavender and Rock Tunnel very soon. A lot of items and very quick su succession to grab there. A rock slide TM would be something that Gabriel Kalpos could potentially use. Not very helpful for Phoenix Roost at this point. There's another Mewtwo. The pin is for dealing with it. And just a potion on the softs and girls, so uh, yeah, not necessary at all. Gabriel returning for the chambers now. Definitely way more reasonable to do it the way Gabriel Campos did now, instead of what I was th thought earlier. So we'll be getting his pass soon. Uh, nothing in the Saffron checks, nothing on Route 5. So Phoenix Roost will be going over to Lavender. He could go down Route 12, although it probably would be more optimal to just turn in the machine parts. First, since you need to fly back to Lavender anyway for the uh, expansion card check. And yep, Phoenix Roost is going to do that. We'll get to see what is in a rock tunnel. Five items, two of them already turn out to be not uh, not valuable. Uh, I mean, could grab that max revive, but things through not bothering with that. One item left here. As Gabriel Campos is about to pick up the pass. And that was unfortunately a lag that happened there too. I'm not quite sure what we found there because of that, but I don't expect it to be a badge. Oh, there's a rock smash TM. check, then check all the items in Route 12, or not. Okay. Sure. Gabriel Campos on the way to you clear, meanwhile Phoenix Roof's checking out the dark cave.
Yep. Unfortunate let hop let shop there. Seems a bit weird from my perspective for Phoenix Cruise to turn in the machine part and then check the Expansion card check, but not going on to Route 12 after that. It's still three more readily available items there. Um, the way that he would have saved a uh, flying over to Levin there, uh, he now just lost. See now route 45 from Phoenix Roost. There's the radio card. So now we do have a lot of more to do in West Canto. Which also allows Phoenix Roost to uh Wake up the Snorlax and then just spike over to Route 12 and check check the items that way. That's a couple of spots. So could be a backup. I assume a bit more so for Gabriel Campos than really for Phoenix Roost. I want to say against Megahorn specifically that Kabutops still could have been a reasonable alternative. But uh, yeah, that, that's a very specific case. For the most part, this Espeon should probably be fine. So. We did see the SS ticket now here, so that's an additional check that we have available now. But uh, yeah, there's the Boulder Badge, just uh, the old man, uh, apparently not really happy with how Brock is doing his job, just handing out free, free Boulder Badges outside the gym. And the Master Ball on Route 2. We did get one off of our starters. There was the one that we are able to find naturally. And Phoenix Roost are uh, thinking about what to do next. And yep, now we do see the Route 12 checks. And, um, yep, this is the point where Phoenix Roos, uh lost the chance to save and fly trip over to Lavender. Why Gabriel has made it into Dragon's Den, has checked our, uh, out two items already and did not find anything. Route 12 is also empty. Yeah, where to next? Phoenix Rules are uh, taking a few moments to think. Again. And it's now going to head over to Celadon. Which probably means we see Erika. Currently we do see the shop first. First clear item, not a badge.
second care item, not a badge. So one more item and then left. And that's nothing. So Dragon's Den is not necessary. Well, Phoenix Roots deciding to skip Erika for now. Heading towards Janine and Route 15. Could have potentially taken uh, the path to Blaine, fight him for that check, and then go over here to save this specific fight. Yeah, confusion on an Umbreon is probably not what you want to do. That won't do any damage. Looks like Gabriel Campos is running low on Super Repels. Did he restock on Max Repels somewhere? Certainly hope so. Oh, there's a radio card at least for him. Yeah, that's not Janine. Campos now taking the pass towards Kanto. Probably also going to very quickly wake up the Snorlax. Might do the machine part, rock tunnel, chain. Quite a few items to grab over there, but uh, yeah. And nothing on Route 15 or Janine. And we do have Chuck from Phoenix Roost. Which... I believe are the only three checks that we have not seen yet in Kanto. Why do I always mix up saying these? And yep, Gabriel did stock up on Max Repel, so okay. 51 is probably a bit much at this stage, but I mean, if you have the money, you have the money, so why not? Going straight for Sabrina, okay. That's a choice. Gabriel finding out that this moveset isn't really great to deal with the Mistress. Ability will not really help it, but Chuck also has nothing. 
and Phoenix Rose is going to do Claire. So, meanwhile, Gabriel Campos does get a dynamic punch here. We have seen that in the Mort. That's the attack that always confuses. Gabriel now on the way to do search. Still not waking up the Snorlax. So yeah, Gabriel's uh, Gabriel apparently feeling the need to uh, to some the objects. Not going for density. And Gabriel has not really gotten much out of it uh, so far. But he just needs to find the Thunder Badge somewhere that Phoenix Roost is not going to search for. And that would be all that he needs to win. Yeah, um, still, the, the moveset of Gabriel Campos not really being that great. So, uh, using ancient powers over strength, uh, while that is your only Ghost coverage is a bit uh, questionable, I'd, I'd say at least. Guy attack and for us uh, should probably not be that scary. Anyhow. Gabriel is going to wake up the Snorlax. Meanwhile, Phoenix Rose swiftly dealt with Claire. But now, going to loot an empty Dragon's Den. Gabriel Campos is on the way to grab the Boulder Badge. I somewhat suspect that we also see a pretty direct rock. From Gabriel here. Gabriel also not interested in taking the backup Kabutops. Which honestly I'm not very surprised uh, with at this point given how loyal Gabriel Campos was to this Flareon. There weren't really too many great options to switch to anything else, but uh, yeah. Gabriel did seem very dedicated to this Flareon from the start. It definitely didn't have the move set uh, to uh, support that decision. But yeah, as I kind of expected, we do see an immediate Brock from Gabriel Campbells, and if the Thunder Badge is here on Brock, this could actually be. Uh, the winning move for Gabriel Campos here. But 
I mean, given that we do definitely now have Bone Meringue and Shadow Ball to choose from, I cannot see why Gabriel is sticking with the Pin Missile. It's just not a good move. Phoenix Rules did forgot to check the lost item, but uh, no, has remembered that at least. Brock did only have a revive, so that was not Gabriel's winning play. And it looks like we will be going to see Erica from Phoenix Roost now. Not even bothering picking up the leftovers. Like we also will be seeing Blaine from Gabriel Campos first. That fight would be available at any point now to Gabriel Campos if he so desires. And Phoenix Roost has managed to reach Erica. So let's see if she is holding on to our last badge. Gabriel on the plane fight. See, Erica has an X Defend and a Max Elixir. Looks like we have Phoenix Roost back for the machine part check here. Just a calcium, I expect we see search. Yep. And Blaine has an elixir. Oh, Gabriel is decided uh, is taking that opportunity, like I mentioned earlier, to go over to Janine. are getting less and less. We do still have the entirety of Route 25 available to us. I don't think either runner checked the hidden item in Misty's gym after turning in the machine part. We do have a Route 4 as an option. And blue. And if any of those lead to the basement key, that would also become available. And we do have the boat, as Phoenix Roost is going to show us right now.
and now Gabriel Campbell's probably going to head over to Lavender do the machine part quest check out the rock tunnel so we'll be spending a bit more time here doing stuff that we've already seen and there's really not much left that Phoenix Roost could do that we've seen already. Could go for Brock, could go for Blaine, but uh, yeah. I would assume Phoenix Roost is also pretty close to just go and straight up do Route 25 at this point. Or do Brock into Route 4? Maybe that into Route 25? So yeah, uh, Gabriel Campos does not really have that many chances left to win. But it's not the boat, that's at least something that Gabriel Campos could potentially save time on. See what Phoenix Roost is deciding to do next. That looks like Bro potentially followed by Route 4, which is a check that we would not have seen. Oh, that we did not see yet. Um Did I Phoenix Roost miss just doing Bro? Because this is just a straight up Route 4 play. Which, uh. Okay, sure. Why not? Uh, the, the expansion card check and combining that with Route 12. So he will be safe that one fly over here to Lavender. A duel of the mains on Phoenix Roost's side. Uh, but the uh, Phoenix Roost Espion are uh, a bit higher level just taken. That's pretty easy here to rival fight. And yeah, one more fight for Phoenix Roost before he is able to get access to this item. And that is Gabriel Campo still checking out the, the machine part checks. One last year for him. And we might potentially see uh, Route 25 at the same time from both runners. No, this looks... Oh, yes, this, this might be Route 25 for Gabriel Campos. Or Misty Jim first. Was he not over here to Route 5 even? Got the fly point, okay. My Phoenix crew is just checking out the gym. Or a full here. And that is followed up by, yep, looks like we do have... Well, Gabriel still needs to check out the gym first, but uh, yeah, both runners at almost the same time attempting to go towards Route 25, and uh, I do think if it's not here or on Misty, then it has to be blue. I do think we have seen every other check at this point. So yeah, four more items left to find. Um, we did see Blaine. Gabriel's compost did them um, did Blaine already. 
and has set up blue to be fought already. He just would need to fly over there. Phoenix Roost has not been to plane or to Cinnabar yet. Oh, yeah. Again, both at the same time on Route 25. Phoenix Roost about a minute ahead and has six levels on really just a trainer fight ahead at this point, uh, but uh, yeah, he, has, he does have an, uh, a 6th level elite over the Flareon. But he has beyond and has the better moveset to boot, so... Uh, and thank you for wasting our time, Polyrath, with all that protecting. <laughs> and then Houndoom with Endure. Oh god, uh, The annoying combo. Gabriel okay, Campos getting one less protect from the Polyrath. And not endure from the Houndoom, so it's going to save a little bit of time here on this fight. Vital throw, probably not the move that we are looking for. And there's the Thunder Badge on row 25. Again, Phoenix Roost with about a minute, or being about a minute ahead, and um, a six level advantage on Flareon, in addition to just straight up the better moveset. So, yeah, the only big problem here potentially could be. Be uh, Mega Horn lead on red, since Gable Campus would be able to resist that with Flareon, while Phoenix Rules would take uh, super effective damage from that. Aside from that, I do think uh, Phoenix Rules should be probably be able to handle almost everything. I mean, this lead could potentially be problematic too, that's true. Although you can most likely just freely set up on that Blissey then. Which does not make that too big of a problem. Like the Blissey would have need to have haste or something like that. Then it could be a problem. Oh. Gyarados, we do have Thunder for that, and we do have X accuracies to uh, them. Oh. If we just need to spam Thunder for this fight, this will be pretty easy. Oh, Persian getting an curse in. Oh, 
we cannot use thunder on that, and it uses thrash and crits us, and that hurts, but we do have a repel revive? Yep, there we go. I mean, level 66 as beyond us as work. And victory ball almost crumbles and does not get us with fire blast. So yeah. GG, Phoenix Roost wins this race. Gyarados has Mega Kick, okay. Yeah. Phoenix Roost finishing uh, with a time of 2 hours, 31 1 minutes and 13 seconds. <laughs> Does this Gyarados really have Destiny Bond? Oh, wow. Uh, that's me. Also, a sacred fire. So, yeah, this, this Gyarados could have been potentially troublesome, but uh, having Thunder for it with its accuracy, so. Yeah. And that's Destiny Bond striking for Gabriel Campos. Reset. Mega kick uh, here for Gabriel Campos. So. Yeah. That's one where the level difference kinda shows a bit. And to just the inability to get um, Thunder in it with a 4 times weakness to it while having an incredible special attack uh, to get rid of the Skeletor. So. Oh, another crit. Oh, this is this is unfortunate. You now have the winner of our race here, uh, GD's Phoenix Roost. Uh, yeah. Congrats to your first win in a tournament. Yeah, and it took a while. I didn't think it was going to happen. Every time I went to st um, one of the checks, like, I, when I left Blackthorn, every time I checked something other than Claire, I was like, this is the wrong move and I'm going to see him finish. And basically everywhere I went I did that, but it's been- it was dragging, so I started going to the places where you don't want to go. And I know you're supposed to not metagame, but at two and a half hours it- what else can you do? I mean, by the end you had almost done everything, so, uh... uh, uh. At that point, going to Route 25 uh, was, was one of the last uh, things you had to do, uh, aside from uh, probably doing Brock, which I think you skipped, and doing um, and Blue. Yeah, skipped Brock, because I, I got Boulder Bad from the old man, and I was like, yeah. that's a nice coincidence, I guess. But yeah, um, no, if it did had not been there, I think I would have been... I would have gone down to Blaine. Yeah. That burned me. I don't remember if it was on my last race or on one of my practice heats, but that 
Burnley bad series from this. I think I'm just gonna go to Nugget. Yeah. Gabriel Campos did manage to also finish this race with a time of two hours, thirty-five minutes and forty-four seconds. Um, yeah, but uh, overall, uh, the big difference was pretty much very early on that you decided to uh, not uh, catch a Flareon on Route 29 with your Master Ball already, and instead just uh, decided to fish up an Espeon, which uh, came with stab confusion. Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That pretty much uh, gave you um, almost everywhere the advantage just in fighting because Gabriel uh, tried to uh, or did run the Flareon he fought on Route 29 on level 2 uh, all the way to the end, but uh, his early on moveset was just uh, Psy Beam, Giga Drain, and uh, Pin Missile, which uh, not, not it, it did what it needed. <laughs> It did what it needed to do, but it didn't really do it very effectively. So, yeah. No, I think yeah, you want physical moves on a Flareon. I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, I and... saw I saw the Marowak move set and was like, well, I can't I can't do anything with this. And I, I mean, twenty nine. I, I thought about doing twenty nine, but I was like, I'm gonna trust the seed to sort of tell me what to do. And then I got the old rod and I was like this at the berry guy and it's like I guess I guess this is what I do. Yep. And in the end it was absolutely right to do that. Uh, uh, it took a while. You, you got that waterfall HM uh, very early that you did not decide to teach. Uh, and you eventually were, were rewarded for it with finding surf uh, and fog badge in the lighthouse. Just uh Kind of interesting to see in there. Um, I can't remember because I told I when I do these after a while everything just sort of blends together. What all was down? What all was in Azalea? That was like the nothing. Azalea bottom, the bottom half. Like I did really? backwards Azalea into Union. Like, like the 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 store batch down in Union Basin was the only important thing down there. There were a few fetch quits. I guess Whirlpool was there too. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Um. There, there were a few fetch quest items. Or uh, the, the uh, red scale on Route 32, the uh, lost item in the Alex right, Forest. Right, right. But none of the important checks were in Azalea uh, itself. Uh, it was really just uh, even the decision to put off Azalea for so long that you actually had surf while you're down there uh, gave you the ab ab ability to get uh, uh, the the storm edge there reasonably good. While Gabriel Campos did just uh, decide to stick with the Flareon early on and then did just the normal Azalea loop after Faulkner yeah. without really checking out. Uh, well, he did grab the Kenya, but uh, did not keep it for uh, the dig and uh, also didn't really check out Bill's Pokemon, so just stuck with the Flareon, did the normal loop, and therefore had to leave behind the Storm Badge there because he could, got his Surf Axis way later. But yeah, all, all these things kind of routed pretty good into what you were doing and gave you an, uh, the, the advantage overall in the long run, which eventually allowed you to just go do E4 right then and there and uh, while it was not really, uh, necessary. Yeah, that's at that point I had uh, that Ecritique and Soft Sand Girls left, I think, and Parcel... Yeah partial ice cave which had the strength in it to troll you yep yep <laughs> so i was like maybe it's maybe it's i think how long was was it like hour and a half or so by then it and i had did. It definitely took a while to get you to that point that uh yep. yeah i had oh, so few so. checks i was like maybe this is an e4 seat and like you say i was there so i just did it while i was there yeah, I mean, the, the big thing that you can say about this, you get the fly point at the Nico Plateau there. So you definitely could have decided to just grab the fly point first, check out the U2 Ice Path uh, checks, and maybe the Morty check uh, first, and then see if you just have the 50 50 available. Um, on the other hand, your Espeon was 
pretty well equipped to uh, deal with uh, the yeah. war, especially uh, with the Thunder TM you uh, found shortly before that to really round out the moveset and yeah, uh, just then buying a bunch of accuracies to get rid of the accuracy problem. Uh, yeah, which, I'm yeah. going to check something real quick. Um, cause I was, I was, went to Celadon and I was, oh wait, let's reset here. I went to Celadon and I checked the TMs and I'm curious what that ice TM was. Cause I ended up not buying it cause I had, um, Aurora Beam already. Yeah. Did, um, so I don't know what that was. So I'm going to go check that real quick. Yeah, I actually didn't really notice that there was something, uh, that there was an ice TM in there. Uh, Gabriel Campos, given that he had what the, has the Flareon, uh, was, wasn't really inclined to try anything with special attacks either. So That's don't, true, um, yeah. Um, no, I definitely would have. Uh, I mean, we had some decent physical TMs, I thought. Yeah, yeah um, we definitely had. And uh, one thing that I kind of uh, was lamenting about on Gabriel's side is that he took a very, very long time to teach any of them, and in the end he only taught Karate Chop. He never taught Bone Meringue, he never taught Shadow Ball, which uh, yeah. Definitely have could, have, uh, could have improved uh, the Flareon, but uh, oh. I mean I don't know. I've never run a Flareon. I think if I had seen the Flareon on 29, I would have kept looking for something else. Um, so. It would have actually been nice Beam, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, on the other hand, um, Aurora Beam isn't the worst move. Uh, it has the 100% accuracy, and uh, yeah, with Thunder, you already were, uh, were, were very well equipped. You had Confusion, and you were running an Espion, and you end up to level 66. Uh, that doesn't necessarily need Ice Beam to kill a lot of stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, for the red fight in the end, you, you didn't even set any X specials. You you only set the X ERC, and that was enough for the most part. So, yep. yeah, would have been nice, but uh, that wasn't really necessary. Yeah, I was I couldn't remember if that was the powder snow description or not, so I decided not to risk it and just go with Aurora Beam. Yeah, I'm um, I'm not one hundred percent sure on every move description either. Uh, I most likely would have just checked it with a safe reset, but uh, yeah. On the other hand, uh, again, we we just had Aurora Beam, so I think, especially after Thunder, I wouldn't probably even have bothered checking out the TMs because uh, I don't really need anything else after that. I think I was I was hoping I was gonna find Psy Beam or Psychic, if I if I remember yeah. my thought process, but I definitely wasn't gonna spend a lot of time on it. Yeah, I mean, that would certainly have helped. Uh, so it was also a bit unfortunate that Espion only wanted to learn Crunch at, as its last move and not earlier. It could have been definitely very good way yeah. early on instead of Pursuit. Yeah, if it, yeah. yeah if, I think I might have even taught that in the Surf slot if I hadn't taught Surf and just had Surf on somebody else. But Surf on a special EV is pretty good. In general, I th don't think there's really much that you would want to teach instead of Surf, even Crunch. Surf is just so versatile on any special attacker. Uh, given that it's more often than not your uh, better uh, rock ground type coverage, although Aurora Beam does that job probably well enough too. But it also gets stuff like Steelix and Steel Times neutrally if you don't have an electric type move. So. That there's really not much uh, reason to teach uh, Crunch instead of Surf, or in general anything over Surf if you have the availability availability for it. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In the end, overall, it just came down to uh, yeah hunting down that last batch. Gabriel Campos uh, did go for some of the Canto leaders. Uh, earlier than you um oh yeah i know i, have no uh, doubt. I um did you even do sabrina no no sabrina yeah um i i only did erica because she has two checks 
Yeah. I did Janine, but it didn't really feel right. But I've been, you know, Janine can be early in logic a lot, so I usually go there first. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, no, no Brock, no Misty. I only did Surge because I was thinking it could be Boat. So I was like, I had three things to do in Vermilion, so I just went and did them all. Watch um, this yeah. No, no Blaine, no Blue. Thank goodness, it's a faff. Yeah, but yeah, uh, that, that, that was the boat is definitely reasonable, and that was actually uh, one of the checks that, that that you did that Gabriel did not in the end. Um, even though uh, Gabriel did uh, uh, Brock immediately when he was in uh, Pewter and did search immediately when he was in uh, uh, Vermilion, uh, he also rushed uh, Sabrina. But uh, in the end, Gabriel did. I think did not do Erica and uh, went to twenty five instead. Uh, yeah, I think so. that's probably not terrible because twenty five is annoying. But if you have cut in logic, then you can All just right. go through there and you get some good experience if you do it early. So I think I that mean, was probably in logic for us to do have done earlier than. We did. I mean, uh, yeah. Although you do, you did well. True. Um, the, the the pass was just in the waterstone chamber there, waiting waiting for you right then and there. Uh, you all you had to do was go into ice path. Um, and yeah, we we did have a lot of access once we got uh, all of those. Uh, Interestingly enough, both of you did leave behind the radio card for a bit, even though you both went to Blackthorn as soon as you found the storm badge, uh, the, the plane badge. Um, you decided to, uh, I think, head into Tin Tower? Yeah, I went as soon know? as I had the clear bell, I went right to the Tin Tower. And Gabriel did not immediately go there, did a bit of other stuff first, I think, was also rushing Claire at that point, or at some point, was definitely doing Claire way before you. Um, so yeah, there, there were a few differences after that point, but uh, yeah, again, funnily enough, uh, you both uh, kind of decided to uh, put off the, uh, the, the plane badge for a long time, uh, although Gabriel Camp was also... For him, it was just mere his routing decisions overall, it was not skipping Ice Pass itself, he uh, just never returned to... Uh, Mahogany until he got fly again. Uh, so, yeah. Then also you both decided to leave behind the radio card for again. Where, where was the radio card? On Route 45. The, uh, directly below okay, yeah. uh, Vector okay. on the route. Yeah. So, yeah. Which then, uh, yeah, kind of led to both of you, uh, yeah. Leaving up, uh, or leaving up some of the uh, candle stuff to do, but yeah, in the end, it, it again came down pretty close. But just the overall fighting advantage you had with the Espion overall just prevailed in the end, giving you that full additional time to do E4 just for the experience, and then uh, yeah, just having that uh, quite easy. Uh, Red fight. Um, you were just about a minute apart on getting to red, but uh, yeah, the 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 uh, the Gyarados that was the lead with having Mega Kick and uh, Destiny Bond also gave oh, Gabriel God. some trouble. Yeah, I can uh, imagine. It also had Sacred Fire, which wasn't really terrible on the Flareon, but uh. And it, would have, it was actually a pretty, pretty uh, dangerous Gyarados for a lot of things. And uh, yeah, just being able to get rid of it with Thunder uh, turned out to be very, very good for you. Hmm. And yeah, uh, the, the, the Destiny Bond especially uh, did cost Gabriel an attempt as he was fully set up. But uh, yeah, there was just one Destiny Bond, Destiny Bond tick left that he wasn't uh, paying attention to, and uh, it got him. Oh, yeah, I would, I in his views, I would 100% probably do the same thing, because I, I don't, I don't know how many, is it, 
do the enemies do five on every move? Or do they have the normal amount of PP in Gen 2? They should have the, uh, the normal amount, so... Uh... Okay, I would definitely have lost count then. <laughs> I, I would I would 100% have fallen for that as well. Well, nonetheless, uh, that's your first win here in the second to last round, so you will have... Uh, one more race to play. Um, even before this race, you didn't really have any chances to continue into the brackets anymore. But uh, yeah, yeah, you you will have that one last race to get at least a second win onto your belt. Um, uh, yeah, best luck for that. Um, do you have Thank anything you. else left you want to mention? I don't think so. Like I say, the race stuff mainly blurs together, so I don't have any intelligent comments on that. No, I think I'm good. Thanks for commentating. Definitely an interesting race. Uh, you did very well for the most part. So, uh, well, I'd say a deserved win here. So, um, yeah. I think that's everything from us here right now uh if you want to see more of uh, the full item randomizer tournament we do have additional races today we do have one race at 1 30 p.m eastern time uh with xan versus vaka that is not going to be on speed gaming channels but i do think there will be a brazilian restream at least so uh if you want to see, just to see it, even if you don't understand the language, just, uh, just keep uh, uh, eyes peeled on that. Uh, I think it's on uh, Render Brazil or uh, was it on Brad? I, I'm not sure which stream it was, but uh, if you want to find the information, you probably can in the Discord. Uh, you also find the links to follow the runners here in the chat right now, alongside with the Uh, well, I'm apparently not good enough to type commands correctly. <laughs> or the bot, bot just decided to uh, not wanting to do anymore. Because yeah. apparently I did the right command, whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, there will be also one more race on the Speed Gaming channel today at 5 p.m. Eastern Time with uh, Toxic versus Norms that will be going on uh, Speed Gaming 4. So two more races today, then there will be three more races tomorrow and one last race on uh, Monday to round out Route 5. After that, there will be one more round on the Swiss stage. And after that, there will be brackets where we will finally go over to the crazy mode. So all those buried trees and hidden items and that will be added into the pool. So yeah, a lot more of this tournament to come and a lot of more exciting races uh, to look forward to. But uh, yeah, that should be everything for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, leave the runners a follow if you uh, enjoyed what I've shown you here today. I think they would probably appreciate that. Uh, I don't know. See you next time.